on this uh, solemnity of Corpus Christi and very excited for the upcoming canonization of two paisans. Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati and Blessed Carlo Acuti. Blessed Pier Giorgio was born in 1901 to a very wealthy family in Turin. He was well known by his family and his parish for being an outdoorsman, teaching the faith as a catechist, and he loved Eucharistic adoration. What his parents didn't know was how generous he was in serving the poor. Pier Giorgio's father owned a paper mill and did very well for himself, and any money that he gave his son was given away to the poor. Blessed Frassati eventually caught polio from his intimate interactions with the poor and died at the young age of 24. And it wasn't until his funeral was packed with the poor and marginalized from Turin that his parents found out what their son did in his free time. Person after person, expressed their condolences to his family, and shared stories about how their son bought them medicine, food, clothing, read to their children, bandaged their wounds, and cared for them. There were so many people at his funeral, they couldn't fit in Torin's cathedral church, and the streets outside were packed with the poor, that he served. Now, Blessed Pierre only served the poor because he knew it was his vocation to do so. And he received his vocation directly from our Lord in the Eucharist. He loved the Mass and Eucharistic adoration. And that is what sent him out to serve the poor in humility of heart. Now, Blessed Carlo Acuti is only a year younger than myself. He was born in 1991 and grew up in Milan. He was diagnosed with leukemia and died in 2006 when he was 15 years old. Blessed Carlo also loved the Eucharist, and he even created a website that you can still visit today, where he logged over 180 Eucharistic miracles throughout the history of the Church. If you just Google search his name, Blessed Carlo Acuti, Eucharistic Miracles, it'll pop up and it's in every language that we have on this planet. He's already been named the patron saint of gamers. He was buried in his favorite Nike shoes. And Blessed Carlo knew that the Internet would be a great vehicle for evangelization, which led him to create his website on the Eucharist. He loved Jesus and desired to live holiness as best he could. Even on his website, he has instructions for how to grow in holiness. And the first rule is, you must want it with all your heart. Both of these men, as well as all the saints, desired holiness of life with all their heart. And it's exciting to think this year we'll be celebrating both of their canonization. Holiness looks like something. Think of church buildings and architecture. There is a definite difference walking into a beautiful Baroque or European-style church even here in Chicago versus a modern church that could easily become a pizza hut or that may look like a spaceship. Holiness looks like something. To say that I'm a disciple of Jesus has to look like something or else it's just empty words. Disciples of Jesus have the Eucharist at the center of their lives. Holy Mass is not just something we do when it's 
convenient or when I feel like it. Holy Mass, especially on Sunday, is a non-negotiable for disciples of Jesus. Daily prayer is a non-negotiable for disciples of Jesus. Regularly receiving the Sacrament of Reconciliation is a non-negotiable for disciples of Jesus. Practicing the corporal and spiritual works of mercy are non-negotiable for disciples of Jesus. When people see us, they should see Jesus. All the saints were known for their radical lives as disciples of Jesus, and we should be known for the same. How we receive the Eucharist also tells people, especially guests and non-Christians, about our devotion and faithfulness to the Lord. I've been preaching all the Masses this weekend for two reasons. One, to share our, uh, how disciples should be uh, uh, worshiping God and right reverence for the Eucharist, but also then to cover some practicals of these kneelers that you see in front of you this morning. It's important to remember the Eucharist is God. In that tabernacle resides the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, and Prince of Peace. This is why we genuflect and bow to him, God, in the tabernacle as we enter and leave the church. His presence is why a church building is treated differently from any other banquet hall, meeting room, or gathering space. And when Jesus is brought out into our midst, either for Eucharistic adoration or to receive him in Holy Communion, our attention and focus should be on him alone and making sure that he is properly honored and worshipped. For Holy Communion, we must be in a state of grace to receive our Lord in the Eucharist. Now, that means we, if we've committed any mortal sins and have not had the opportunity to be forgiven of them in the Sacrament of Reconciliation, we cannot receive the Eucharist. Receiving the Eucharist with unconfessed mortal sins on our souls is in and of itself a mortal sin. I don't have time in this homily to cover mortal sins. You can talk to Deacon Mike or Father Dominic or myself after Mass. Be happy to fill you in or just Google it. I'm sure Carlo Cuti wrote on it himself. Um, so we can cover that another day if needed. But if you know, you know, and now you know. So if you're not receiving the Eucharist, because you may need to go to confession, or maybe you didn't fast, or, or you don't feel well, um, ready to receive the Eucharist, there can be a variety of reasons why one will, won't receive the Eucharist, or chooses not to. We ask that as you approach the minister, that you put your arms across your chest like I'm doing, uh, to either be prayed over or receive a blessing. But you can also uh, remain in your pew. I'd also like to just remind you we have confessions available now before the 4.30 Mass on Saturdays and after the 8 a.m. and after the 9.30 a.m. Mass on Sunday. If, you come, if this is your regular Mass time, you can come before Mass begins. If you've brought someone to, to Mass, which is a beautiful evangelical practice uh, to invite people to come experience the fullness of love here in our community of faith and in the Eucharist, and the person you brought may not be Catholic, or maybe they have fallen away from the church for a long time and you're accompanying them back into the church, please let them know about coming up for communion. Don't assume that they know or don't assume that they're just watching and paying attention. It, this can be overwhelming to someone who has no idea what's going on with the sitting and the standing and the funny clothes and the candles and the smoke and all that. So and, and tell them, help to teach them, truly accompany them so that they know how and what to do as they come up, if they should or shouldn't be taking the Eucharist, and help them to feel comfortable here. For those of you who are receiving the Eucharist, as you come up to receive the King of Kings, it's proper to bow before approaching the minister, 
And then there's a variety of ways you can receive the Eucharist. It is the preference of our universal church to receive the Eucharist directly on your tongue while kneeling. However, here in the United States, the bishops for decades have given permission for us to receive the Eucharist in our hands while standing. For the last, this whole Easter season in my bulletin articles, if you if you need a cure for insomnia, that's uh, your cure. Uh, but I've been encouraging all of us to try receiving the Eucharist on our tongue while kneeling if you've never done it before or maybe haven't done it since you were a child. And I ask that if you do want to receive the Eucharist on your tongue, whether standing or kneeling, um, that you stick your tongue completely out of your mouth so that the minister can safely place the Eucharist on your tongue. For those of you who, re who would like to receive uh, standing or in your hands, we now have these kneelers, which were asked by those of you who did read the bulletin articles, but uh, find it difficult to get up and down off the floor. And so your prayers have been answered. We have kneelers now, uh, and we'll have them all Sundays uh, going forward. Uh, so feel free to use the kneeler if you would like. If you prefer to re uh, receive in your hands, you might have to extend your arms out a little further than normal or at least come close to the kneeler so that the minister can reach your hands and safely uh, give you the Eucharist. Um, there also will still be the two ministers against the pews without kneelers if you feel more comfortable going to them. I do ask that for those of you receiving the Eucharist in your hands to remember that the Eucharist is a gift to be received, and it's not something that we're owed and is taken. So please receive the Eucharist from the minister, uh, which is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, safely in your hands. I think it was St. Ignatius of Antioch who said our hands should be like a throne to receive the King of Kings. We, don't, we never want Jesus to fall on the floor or um, something else. Right? Uh, so, so safely receive him. Do not take him from the minister. Um, and also, please consume our Lord as soon as you receive him in your hands. Please do not walk away with Jesus in your hands. Please consume him immediately. To be a disciple of Jesus looks like something. That's not a title given out willy-nilly like executive producers on television shows. When people look at me, and they look at you, when they look at our family, they should know right away that we're disciples of Jesus without us even uttering a word. How we pray, serve, lead, and worship God is evangelical. And it tells people who we are and whose we are. By putting the Eucharist and Eucharistic devotion at the center of our life, we will, like Blessed Carlo Acuti and Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati, become saints who will inspire others to be saints to build the kingdom of God with us.